Hello you fine mother hubbards, this is Chris from Techspert and I'm here with Asus fresh new Predator Triton 500 series gaming laptop. Starts at £1,800 here in the UK, you can get it from the usual places like Curry's, PC World, stuff like that. And it's surprisingly slim and light, just 2.1 kilograms and roughly 18 millimetres thick. So what we're going to do, yank it out of the box, get it all set up, run it through some benchmark and show off the specs, the hardware, the software, everything you could possibly need to know. So first up, straight away, very impressed by the size of the power adapter. It's still quite brick-like, but compared with the standard game and laptop adapters that you get, this thing ain't too bad at all. You could probably still beat someone to death with it, um, but at least it won't completely weigh you down if you are taking it out and about. And here is the mini box within the big box, which actually contains the laptop. Get a nice little envelope with all of your uh, random pamphlets, literature, such forth stuff. And then the actual laptop itself in a lovely uh, protective cover. Let's put the Ace of Predator brand in there. Of course, there is the actual laptop itself. So as you can see there, the Ace of Predator Triton 500 is indeed pretty slim and uh, yeah, reasonably light at sort of 2.1 kilograms. Uh, so certainly for a top end gaming laptop, not too shabby at all. I've played with a couple of Republic of Gamer ones from ASUS that are sort of pretty much the same sort of design build. Um, but yeah, definitely good stuff so far. So it is a black metal uh, design. The actual metal chassis itself feels pretty solid here for the actual frame. Uh, the lid does have quite a lot of flex, especially towards the center there, which you can hopefully make out. The lid does bend quite a bit, but hopefully the display will withstand that bit of punishment okay. I'm definitely liking the look of the Predator Triton 500 so far. It's actually pretty subtle design work for a gaming laptop. You've got some nice little uh, detailing, such as, for instance, the edges here just sort of declines just slightly there. Nice angular finish to it. Uh, and of course, up front, you've got the, uh, the Predator logo right there built into the lid. Apparently, that's a nice bit of LED edging, so that'll be flashing in people's faces when you're doing a bit of gaming in Starbucks or whatever. Uh, but yeah, overall, for a gaming laptop, it looks rather smart. Got the power button up in this corner here, so let's just give it a quick tap, see if we've got any juice in the tank. We do indeed. Very dramatic uh, start up there, loving it. Well, I've got to say, a rather drab looking wallpaper. I was expecting something a bit, a bit more funky than just a few lines, but never mind, can obviously change that easily enough. Let's just have a quick explore of the edges as well, see what the ports are like. So as you can see here, we've got two full-size USB 3.0 ports here on this uh, right edge. And we've got another one over here on the left-hand side as well. Got a nice bit of gigabit ethernet action, of course. You've got your HDMI as well for plugging in a, uh, an external monitor. And then over on here, you've got a display port and you've got a Type-C, it's actually a Thunderbolt port by the looks of it. So you can actually connect up to three external displays to this bad boy if you want. So that'll be good for your gaming setup if you want a proper immersive experience. Thankfully, you do seem to get a pretty good screen actually built into the Triton 500 as well. It's a 15.6 inch IPS display, full HD uh, resolution. And as you can see there, a bit of 144 hertz refresh rate as well, as you kind of expect from a, a decent gaming laptop these days. The colorometer display test showed that the Predator Triton 500 has a perfectly respectable panel if you are going to be gaming on the go. It covers 96% of the sRGB gamut, so close enough to the full gamut, and 75% of that Adobe as well. On top brightness, it's around 320 nits, so not one of the brightest around, but it's fine as long as you haven't got any bright light shining directly off it. And at least it does have a matte surfacing as well to temper those reflections. And it operates around the sort of 7,300 to 7,600 Kelvin range. Just get a bit of Steam downloading so we can get some games installed. And of course the keyboard as well, it's a tri-zone keyboard. If we uh, tap this dedicated Predator button, that should call up, here we go, the Predator Sense software. And that'll just allow you to configure the keyboard as well as all of the other sort of game and features. So as you can see, you can choose between static and dynamic effects. So you can have it twinkling or just kind of flashing basically, a meteor effect, very nice. You can also do a nice rainbow wave. As you can see, full range of colors supported. Um, so yeah, all kinds of different effects you can play around with if that's your bag. You wanna get a bit of a fireworks style display on the go. Otherwise, you can select individual colors for the three different zones. So for instance, let's have a bit of uh, red, a bit of dark blue and a bit of purple. There you go, just to show off the different sectors in action. Initial impression is definitely strong. You've got a nice little bit of travel to each of the keys. They're well spaced. It's a good size of keyboard, definitely. Very little in the way of flex in the middle, but it does have kind of a soft bouncy feel to it. I know some people prefer a rigid keyboard for gaming, but I've never really been much of a fan. And you do get full highlighting of the WASD keys uh, and a couple other bits like the arrow keys as well, which is quite nifty. 
And then up here in this corner here, you get a turbo key as well, which is basically the Ace of Predator Triton 500's Nitro Boost. Uh, give that a little push and it will automatically overclock the uh, processor perfect for those intensive gaming sessions. And as you can see, it does light up when it is active as well, so at least you know that it's on the go. So again, Intel Core i7 8750H chipset packed into all the different SKUs of the Acer Predator Triton 500. And that's backed by the 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, depending on which model you go for. So that should provide really slick performance for all of your recent games, even on those top detail levels. And of course, you do get a dedicated GPU. It's a GeForce RTX 2060 or 2080, depending on which model you go for. So again, solid uh, performance for the latest titles, full ray tracing support for realistic lighting effects, everything you need. Because you can only do the overclocking if you're actually plugged in. Um, so, oh, and immediately <laughs> the, uh, the Everblade 3D cooling system has kicked into life. Uh, so as you can see, it's set to extreme uh, overclocking at the moment, but you can uh, toggle that down if you want to. And that triple fans are definitely very noisy with the overclocking, but of course a necessary evil in order to keep the Predator cool. At least you do have plenty of vents here. I can already feel actually a good bit of heat starting to come off that thing, and I'm not even actually doing any gaming at the moment. But uh, because of that slender build, of course, you don't want to throttle this thing. You want to make sure that all that hot air is dispelling as quickly as possible. Yeah, let's just knock that back off again. There we go. So what about the benchmarking? Well, we kicked off with a nice light bit of PC Mark 10 with the Predator Triton 500, and it's got a very respectable score of 5,696, better than 84% of all recorded results. Some respectable scores in a bit of 3D mark as well. I've got the RTX 2080 model of the Triton 500 and it's got over 16,000 for Firestrike 1.1, over 35,000 for Skydiver 1.0, over 31,000 for Cloudgate 1.1 and over 132,000 for Ice Storm 1.2. Sweet. And in our Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark and test, the Triton 500 conjured up some pretty solid scores. Geothermal Valley was an average FPS of 92 frames per second, maxed out at 127, didn't drop any lower than 37 and the overall score was 108. As for the storage, you get a choice of a single or dual 512GB SSDs and good news for gamers because they are fast as shit. And that in a nutshell is Acer's new Predator Triton 500. As you can see, quite slim and light gaming laptop that certainly doesn't skimp out on the performance either. So are you tempted? Definitely let us know in the comments down below and stay tuned for my in-depth review. Hopefully it should be coming in a week or so after uh, lots and lots of extensive testing. Damn, I've got a tough job. And for more on the latest, greatest tech, don't forget to pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers.